Hey guys, do you like DOS sound cards? Do you like AliExpress? Well then, do I have the video for you because I got a sound card that is compatible with DOS and early Windows directly from AliExpress. This card cost me about $13 or so, so it might be a good option if it's any good. Now it's not an ISA card, it is a PCI card, so we're probably not gonna be able to use it on anything older than a Pentium, but still, there's about 9,000 of these things floating around and they're super cheap, so I had to check it out. So without further ado, let's get this thing out of its crappy envelope and check it out. So with the card out of its bubble wrap prison, we can see its true triangular form. Now, usually when we're talking about AliExpress products, we expect some corners to be cut, but in this case, I guess it's literal. So other than its cutoff form, you'll notice the card is very naked looking. So obviously we're not going to find any OPL2 or 3 chips on this thing. Everything's going to be done using software emulation. And looking closer at the card, we can see the main chip on the device is a CMI8738. And this is a C Media chip that as far as I can tell was released sometime in the early 2000s. Taking a closer look at the card, if we look at the back, we can see it has two stereo speaker outputs, a mic, a line in, and probably probably the cheapest game port I've ever seen on any sound card, ever. If we look at the data sheet, we also see that it has some form of wavetable synthesis, as well as support for Creative's EAX environmental effects. So this card appears to be a jack of all trades, but let's see if it's actually any good at any of it. So to find out, we're going to be installing this card into my test system, which for today is my HP Vectra. So as far as sound card installations go on older computers, this one was perfectly fine. The package I got did come with this neat little mini CD, but unfortunately it didn't have the drivers that I needed to support Windows 98 fully in legacy mode. As always though, archive.org came to the rescue and I was able to find an older driver with little effort. So without messing around any longer, let's hear what this actually sounds like in a few DOS games. So listening to these samples, you've likely come to the same conclusion as me, that this thing doesn't sound too shabby. Generally, this card seems to target Sound Blaster Pro compatibility, and for the most part, it works as expected. It's definitely not without compatibility issues, however. Most of the games I tried using this card actually did work, but there were a few notable exceptions of games that simply would not work no matter how much I tinkered with them. Some of these sort of surprised me as well, since they were actually pretty popular games that you would expect to work. Dune, for one, I couldn't get to work at all. It just acted 
acted like the Sound Blaster wasn't there. Tyrion 2000 has a few problems with sound effects. If you just leave the music on, it seems to work, but whenever you have Sound Blaster mode enabled, it seems to crackle and crash constantly. And then there's Star Gunner, which seems to work when you do the sound test in the setup program, but never works when you load the game. Weird. These flaws aside though, I would still call this card a major win, especially for $12. I can say fairly confidently that in most cases, if the game loads and sound is working, you're gonna have a pretty good time with this thing. But there's more. So yeah, remember how I mentioned before that this card has built-in wavetable synthesis? And yeah, it's not lying, it can do wavetable and general MIDI in DOS games. But the fact remains that I can probably do better renditions of these songs using my armpit farts than using the wavetable on this thing. So yeah, the wavetable implementation is kind of broken and sort of a fail. However, there are some more upsides to this card. The creative EAX support does work. Here's a sample of it in Thief. Hey, I'm going to the bear pit tomorrow. You want to come with? Another notable feature that's kind of odd that I mentioned a little bit at the beginning of the video is the dual stereo outputs. Once you turn these other channels on, you basically get another output that you can plug headphones or speakers into. And this works in DOS or Windows, so I guess if you've ever wanted to play Doom with four speakers, you, you can do it now. Overall though, as a whole, this card turned out to be way more interesting than I thought it would be. I originally thought I would just buy this and I could make fun of it a lot for how terrible it is, but unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, it's actually pretty good. And as time marches on and real old sound cards get to be harder to find, it's nice to have cheap options like this. So I guess I sort of give this a recommendation then, maybe? You know what else I recommend? brushing your teeth every day, and also subscribing to my channel if you enjoy this nostalgia-fueled sound card nonsense. I have lots of other videos on other things if you want to check it out, but if not, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. See that button over there? It's, it's for subscribing. <laughs>